Hello, everybody. How are we doing this morning? Good. All right. Well, it's good to see you here. I'm glad that you came. Glad for those who are watching online. Hello this morning. If you'll stand with us, we're going to lift up our voices and sing Death Was Our Rest. Would you take a moment to greet your neighbor and let him know that you are happy to see them this morning?
Well, good morning. Um, welcome. We have the lights on, as you can tell, this morning. Uh, two weeks ago, we had zero lights, so I'll take any lights that we can have. So, um, just a few announcements this morning, quickly, as we're kind of midway through summer. I don't like to bring that up too much. My kids get mad at me. Um, we do have youth tonight. We do have student crossing tonight at the ministry center. Come bring some questions. Got some things that some fun things I want to do with you guys this evening. So that'll be tonight at 630. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, over the next few weeks, if you guys logged on last week and kind of watched what I talk about, my heart has been um, like really focused on these like villages inside our villages lately. So I want to kind of identify those and help you guys out with what that may look like. So over the next few weeks, you're going to see a little QR code, probably a big one. We'll make it big. Um, we're in the process of creating a form now. And just all you got to do is just tell us your name, an email address, and maybe like what God, this village inside the village that God is talking about, like in your heart. Who is this? Who, who is this village? And just so I can start praying for you guys. Because e each week I want to start praying for where God has placed you. And, and to be able to do that, I, I need to know where God has placed you. For some, it might be your workplace. For some, it might be a, a set of group of friends. If, if you're um, like Amber, I know her homeschool moms that she's with is kind of her village where God has placed her and some teams that Henry plays on. And so us as a church, we want to know that. and We want to be kind of interested in what that is for you and how we can come alongside you, whatever that looks like. It could be maybe help purchasing some things for you inside that group or, or you might need some of us because you're going to start hearing about those villages inside our village, right? You're going to start hearing that when fall starts coming around and, and, and really strategically how we can, I don't want to say attack, but how we can bring the gospel to those villages so that's one big thing that you're going to see i'm hopefully to have that form done by next week so you can start filling that out and just some ideas of how we can um, walk alongside you as a church in your in your journey of christ um, and then that will lead into um, the fall when we start our village crossings our bible studies and all that um, because in august um, the next thing that will be the big question for you is is somebody willing would they like to lead a like a village crossing or would they like to host one not lead but host one at their house and and so you'll start seeing those things pop up and then there's going to be some trainings on that and all that kind of stuff but the big thing is is god tugging on your heart right now for a village inside the village um, i'm excited um, to be back in person this morning for you that are watching at home we're glad that you joined in so i'm gonna pray and as i as i pray i'll turn back over to amber father we thank you so much for your love we thank you so much for your grace. We thank you for a um, moments where we just to come in and be together and worship you. Lord, that, that we know you are almighty God. That even though when we look around, that everything just seems like it's chaos, Lord. That we know who you are inside that chaos. We know that you've never changed from the beginning. We know you've never changed from who you are. Lord, let us stand fast in that. Let us stand fast in the fact that you love us, that you love us enough that you sent your son to come heal these brokenness. So, Lord, that's what we're celebrating this morning. That's what we, we're here this morning that as we sung in the first song, that death is arrested and it no, have, no longer has any hold over us whatsoever. And that's a celebration in you, Lord. And, and that even though it's painful and discomfort and, uh, and the, that you're changing us and you're transforming us, that there's still joy in the fact that we have eternity with you. So let us just sing. Let us open your word full of excitement this morning. We ask this in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Would you stand with us? <laughs> Young, I called my name. I tried to run, but still you came. You stepped into the dark, cause that's just the kind of God you are. And heaven seems beyond my reach. You still see eternity in me. Turning out 
wash us into white Cause that's just the kind of God you are It's in the empty tomb It's on the rugged cross Your death-defying love Is written in your scars You'll never quit on me You'll always hold my heart that's the kind of God you are. He gave me freedom from my sin. He told me I could start again. All the hurt is dead and gone. Now we're your daughters and your sons. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. We once were lost, but now we're found. Forever you hold us in your arms, cause that's just the kind of God you are. It's in the empty tomb, it's on the rugged cross. Your death defying love is written in your scars. You'll never quit on me, you'll always hold my heart. That's the kind of God you are. You are holy, holy, holy. I am set apart. You are holy, holy, holy. God, that's who you are. forsake us, Lord. That's just the kind of God that you are. And I just want to thank you for seeing us where we were and reaching out your hand to rescue us. You're so good and you're so loving. Thank you for that, Lord. We just honor you in your house this morning. You are so, so good, Lord. Thank you for your rescue. When you saved us, Lord. And thank you for your rescue, Lord, on a daily basis. Because we just need you, Lord. We're never going to stop needing you. And you're never going to stop being there for us. And we thank you for that, Lord. Just have your way in this place. I've tried so hard to see it. Took me so long to believe it. But you choose someone like me to carry your victory. Perfection could never earn it. You give what we don't deserve, and you take the broken things and raise them to glory. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand on defeat. Every battle you who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I can see day in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. Now I 
can finally see it. You're teaching me how to receive it. So let all the striving cease. This is my victory. You are my champion. Giant toe and you stand on feet. Father, we do come to you this morning, and once again, we just praise your name, that you are the champion, that you are the, the one that, that came to, in a sense, buy our freedom from death. And Lord, let us just continue to stay excited about that and rejoice in that this morning. We ask this in your son Jesus Christ's name, amen. Thank you, Amber. Kids, you can head on back. Miss Tiffany's back here in the corner. Um, Brody's going to come around if you need to give this morning as well. Um, I did forget one announcement next week. Just look for the flag will be the easiest way to do it. There might be, Lou Kennard had a little bit more participation for his annual camp that he does. And we're going to be kind of used as like a spillover at the school here at Carlisle. Brody, you got somebody over here. Um, um and so they may need it a little bit Sunday. So the flags are either going to be normally where they are on, on a normal Sunday, if that makes sense, or they're going to be on this door over here. All right, so whichever way that you guys need to come in tomorrow or next week, tomorrow, next week, um, just look for the flags. And my dad will be out there standing. I'll be out there standing. So it's either going to be these doors or it's going to be this door, all right, kind of depending on what they need for the camp. I don't know how big the camp is going to be or how big the spillover will be here at the school. Um, maybe I'll have Luke come in and say hey to everybody. I don't know. Um, I still, since he picked Duke, I still don't shake his hand very much. Um, but uh, I'm just playing. But uh, no, so that'll be going on next week. So just kind of look where maybe the flag might be. It's actually probably if you park on this end of the parking lot, it's a little bit closer to get that door. But uh, um, there have been many things in my life that has caused joy in my life. Um, I remember our wedding that caused a lot of joy. I remember our first date actually caused a lot of joy, and I've talked about that not really being um, like she didn't know it was the first date, so I know it didn't really cause joy in her life either because she didn't know it was the first date, right? And so um, the kids being born, that caused a lot of joy. Bro Brody, of course, kind of 
12 hours after he was born, that joy turned into straight panic in our life as well. But, um, um, but both of our kids being born, the things that they've done, um, I need to push that back just a little bit, but um, some of the other achievements in our life, I love watching our kids do things. Brody's been doing some golf lessons this summer, and, and Lily's been doing some volleyball stuff, so watching them kind of grow in the sports that they love to do, um, some of their achievements, some of the things in football have brought me some joys over the years. I've realized that I've coached football for a very long time in my life, um, more probably longer than Nicole ever thought was, because before when we first got together, I started coaching middle school football, and she probably just thought, was hoping it was like a hobby, and it's she knows when July comes, there's a shift in things, but there's been a lot of joy in those things as well. Um, I remember my family, there's been a lot of joy in my, my family growing up as well. Um, but there was one thing, one of the first things I ever remember finding like joy in my life. One of the first things I can remember was on, thir- on Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock, a certain theme song would come on um, the TV. And I'm not going to sing that theme song. I'm not going to, you know... Um, But it was the A-Team, not the movie, the actual TV show. You guys remember, you know, and I love it when a plan comes together, that kind of stuff, right? I I love the A-Team so much that one year for Christmas or my birthday, I got um, the action figures of the A-Team, and it came with the Hannibal disguise costume, right? And it came with, like, a little fake cigar, and, and like, it was just like the— the Groucho Marx, like, glasses and the big nose and the mustache. I love the A-Team. I remember, like, every time it would come on and I'd hear that theme song and, and, and the van jumping, you know, to this day, if I can, I want to buy B.A.'s van. Like, I want to restore that van, and Nicole's like, no way. But, I, I mean, wouldn't it be cool to drive that black with the red stripe with the, with the wing on top of the van just driving it around all town, right? And um, Nicole's like, it is not cool at all. And... I understand the connotations for vans these days would be super creepy as well. I get that, right? Um, but I just love the A-Team, and I, I, would just, I just can't really explain why I got so excited, and it brought me so much joy. It just I would get so pumped up when I heard that, that theme song, right? It was almost like my body was just like, like electric was going through my body. And, and it, once a season, and I don't know if you guys remember this, they always had a special episode and I'm not for sure why they did this but it was a two hour long episode but it would start at nine o'clock and I got so much joy out of watching it that I told mom and dad I promise I'll take a nap and 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 I'll be I won't be I won't be crazy the next day at school it's the same thing that the same deal I make with Brody when late basketball games are on um like our late football game I'm like you've got to make this deal with me man you can't be crazy and cranky the next day and then they wake up and they say something I'm like I told you you shouldn't watch that right it's kind of how I was with my mom and dad but it was so good and so joyous to watch the A-team I wish I could explain that excitement I wish I could explain the moments of joy that came into my life and and I realized like at one point in my life I'm like I don't know if I'll ever feel this again and then all these things happened in my life. I got married, had kids, right? And, and those moments of joy that you can't really explain how you became so joyous. It's, it's your body. Like sometimes your body just, like it's just got a little shiver to it, right? Everybody understand what I'm saying? Does anybody else feel that way or am I just weird? Nobody else gets a little shiver in their body? Yeah, right? And sometimes you just want to shake it, right? See, we know as followers, as we learned a couple weeks ago, that we're bound together by the reality that God is reconciling all his people back to him. And because he's doing this, we're in a community of people that are just like us. That's the thing that ties us together. I was talking with Amber a little bit before. That, that's the thing that ties us together. It doesn't matter who you are, what color you are, where you came from. We all have the reality that God is reconciling us back to him through his son, Jesus Christ. And that puts us together in this new community of people that are just like us. It's what we believe. It's, who we, it's what we are. There, there's a hope in the darkness. There's a light in the darkness. There's a hope in, in the chaos because what God has done, and we've chose to follow that, right? And because of this newfound reality in our life, we now have this thing that causes jo- rejoicing inside of us and that we never had before, right? Like, like the A-team, like watching the Colts come down the aisle, watching my kids be born. 
There's a newfound reality that we live a life that is rejoicing that we never had before. And, and to look at those, this word rejoice, the, the Webster's Dictionary defines it as to make joyful, to gladden. So rejoicing isn't something we do. Rejoicing is what makes us joyful, right? It's something that we see and it makes the joy. In my, so I rejoice and then have joy. Right, I always thought, well, it's just joy coming over me. No, I rejoice, and that's where I find that joy and that gladden that's in my heart. It's not a, a thing of just saying, hey, I'm going to rejoice. Right? It's the rejoicing and the fact that God is making us something new is what brings us joy in this life. So we're going to dig into 2 John this morning. Almost we'll be done. We've got a couple more in 2 John, and 3 John's pretty small as well. Um, 3 John's actually got less words but more verses. All right, so 2 John has 13 verses, 3 John has 15 verses but less words. So 3 John is considered the smallest because it's got less words, right? So we're going to dig into verse 4 and read through verse 6 today. I rejoice greatly to find some of your children. Now remember, John's talking to either a church or he's talking to a, a specific lady here. I rejoice greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth just as we are commanded by the Father. And now I ask you, dear lady, not as though I was writing you a new commandment, but one we have heard from the beginning that we love one another. Verse 6, and this love that we walk accordingly to his commandments, this is the commandment just as you've heard from the beginning so that you should walk in it. So John shares with the readers that he now found, finds this joy. He's, he rejoices in the fact that it causes his heart to be glad. And the fact that the followers are walking in truth. The followers of this specific area, right? They're, they're walking in the truth. And what is this truth that they have learned and walked in? It is simply the gospel that we talk about every week. Right? That Jesus came to live as one of us, tempted in all the ways that we were, lived the perfect life, died the death that was needed for reconciliation, and rose again to give us freedom the only freedom that he can be that can only be found in him see that's the truth that these followers are walking in now we go back to the issue that they kind of had back in those days and they were talking more about they didn't believe that god was or jesus was a real like now if you a couple thousand years and you're in our steps people have more of a problem with god jesus being god right they had more of a problem with like now these days people are like well he's just a good man he's a good teacher he people he was just charismatic or as a young people he had riz right i don't know why i said that but that's what that word means you guys know that's where riz come from charisma right so there's a full word there by the way just to kind of step away somebody said something about me at football on Monday night that I didn't even know. He said I was glazing. I didn't even know what that was, and I had to get explained. Like, I never thought I'd get to the age where I didn't understand what something meant. Right? And he goes, you're glazing, man. And all it was was, is like, we have a guy that helps us coach, and he's, like, super big. Like, Logan Hannon is his name, and, like, he's a monster. I think he's around, he's a year younger than you guys. And, and like, he's a monster. His dad was Shane Hanna. For us that know who Shane is, if you if Shane was to walk in this door, it, um, the biggest mountain of a man you would ever say he played for the Dallas Cowboys, right? And I was like, we were kind of making fun of him for being a little bit late, and I was like, nah, man, you're good, Coach Coach Hannah. You know I love you, man. Don't pick on me like you would everybody else. Don't don't come at me. And they're like, you glazing, Coach Stump. I was like, what in the world? It's like basically just saying, hey, you're sucking up to Coach Hannah so he don't. So he don't beat you down, right? So I found out what that means. So I'm not going to use that in a sermon. But there's people these days that will believe that Jesus just had this charisma that nobody else had. And that's why people followed him. Now you rewind to back in that time, they had no problem believing that Jesus was God because most of the people at that time knew that he rose from the dead. And 500 people personally saw Jesus walking after he was dead on the cross and laid in a grave. So it's flip-flop through time. They had a problem believing that Jesus was a full man. And ultimately, 
really, they thought he just put on like the Scooby-Doo mask. Like he was God, but he just put the mask on, right? And then when he rose from the grave, it's like, ha-ha, look, it's God, right? See, that was the truth that he was trying to fight, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the evil one next week and about that as well. But you see, the real truth that they're walking in is that the truth that brought rejoicing to John is that people walked in the knowledge that Jesus is exactly who he said he is. And these commandments, right? And walking in the truth causes us to fulfill the greatest commandment that Jesus said, to just re rehash kind of what that was. Jesus was asked by a group of law lawyers, what's the greatest law? What's the greatest commandment that was given? And Jesus said to love the Lord God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. And he said the second's just like it, equal. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now, I've talked many a times about sometimes we have a hard time loving our neighbor because we don't love ourselves right, right? We see... Love God and love those around us in the community that he's placed us is how we fulfill this great commandment because we walk in the truth of Jesus is who he is exactly said he is. You see, this will lead us to fulfill this commandment. It's to find joy in the fact that people are walking in that truth. So two questions we'll dig in just a little bit deeper this morning. The first one is, why do we have this commandment? Why do we have the commandment to love God and love the people in our lives? And the second is this, how do we re rejoice on this walk? And the first is simply to answer that question, why do we have this commandment? It's because he first loved us. Because he first loved, right? There's still some things in my life I do because my dad did them. Right? So when I tie my shoes, I tie my shoes exactly how my dad tied his shoes. And oddly enough, this morning, my shoes are not tied. But there's more times in our life that me and my dad both rarely tie our shoes. Am I right, Mom? We just guys that don't tie our shoes. <laughs> um, part of it's body style. <laughs> like, that's a, that's a choice you make. <laughs> like, when you wake up in the morning, you're choosing to wear the shoes that you tie or not tie by how you're feeling, right? The other part of it is we're just kind of quick and on the move. We want to go, right? And so there's other things like shooting a free throw, um, throwing, throwing a baseball. Those things I do almost exactly the way my dad does because that's who I emulate. That's who I watch. That's who I saw, right? I do them because he did it first, right? I, I, did, I practiced footballs in some, or football when I was in the backyard some of the archaic ways that my dad did. Like dad told me they used to run into telephone poles to toughen themselves up. So I tried that before because my dad did it, right? And I realized that my dad played football in the 50s and 60s, and that's a little bit different than playing football now, right? Well, this became difficult when I had my son because here, here's the thing. I wanted to teach Brody how to do things, right? And the only problem is Brody's left-handed and I'm right-handed. And, and so I had to learn how to do things backwards <laughs> so Brody could do them right. And, and like tying shoes and then I realized I'm just gonna have to let him figure it out on his own and figure out a way to do it um, because when I my dad taught me how to tie my shoes um, if you could still feel your feet they weren't and Brody didn't like it he would let me know my it's too tight dad see I firmly believe we do a lot of the things that we do because the person we learned it from did it that way and I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Actually, I'm saying it's kind of a good thing when it comes to following Jesus. Because this is why we have the commandment to love others in our life. Why we walk in the truth. Because he loved us first. Because the one we follow first loved us and showed us the way to put the pieces back together. It's no different than why I do things the way my dad did them. It's no different, you know... Why, like, if we start working the job that we have now and somebody taught us how to do it, why we do that. Now, there's new ways of trying to do things, but you see, we fulfill the great commandment. Why we have the great commandment, it's all because he loved us first. First John 4, 17 through 19, if we review a little bit this morning, says this, By this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment. 
because as he is so, also we are in the world. Because he is in the world, we're in the world. See, we have confidence one day that, that we're going to stand before God, but we've got to understand we're confident in the fact that Jesus was in this world as we're in this world. There's no fear in love. So when we go to the judgment, there's no fear in that because we know who's judging us and we know who we follow. There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out that fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. See, there's, there's the great commandment. There's walking in the truth is simply the fact that we don't fear because of what Jesus did for us. And because we align with that and we follow with that, we'll do the things that he did. Right, And, and we've got to understand that the Bible's not written to a Western world. The Bible's not written to a Americans 2,000 years after it was written. That looks different than what we think. It's different than me saying, man, I would really love a Whopper right now. I don't know why I said Whopper. I haven't had Whopper in a long time. Right? Or I would really love to do this. Or I love Nicole and there's a physicality to all that kind of stuff. Right? When he says love there, that love is what we talk about all the time. It's, it's a love to a point where you transform to make that person the best that they possibly can be. It's not a love of just simply saying, I love you, and I just want you to be happy the way you want to be. It's a love that causes change and that you don't want that person to be hurt. And you don't want that person to struggle anymore. It's a perfected love. It's that we fight for them. That we want to see them have no fear in the day of judgment. You know, just a brief detour here. The Bible tells us that sometimes we'll get our reward earthly. But those who stay steadfast in their faith and following Jesus, your reward comes one day with him. But sometimes he'll give you the reward of how you want to live your life now. But ultimately what he's saying here is that a perfect love, a love cast out fear. Even when you make a mistake, a love that cast out fear. And we love, we follow the great commandment because he first loved us that way. It's a picture of a father when you fall down and you make a mistake. And it's, yes, there's consequences to those mistakes. But it's a picture of a father picking you up. And caressing you and hugging you and teaching you not just, hey, don't do that anymore, but showing you how not to do that anymore. That's why we have the commandment. He's making us like him. That means we do the things that he did. And that means loving people. But let's not get it twisted like I talked earlier. His love was and is a transformative love. He loves us where we're at, but loves us, but his love is greater than just leaving us there. He knows what is best and what sin has done and is doing to us. So he's a transforming God, and this type of love, this is the type of love that we are to walk in and to show. A love that people not only feel, but see transformation happening. The author Layla Gifty Akita says this, The more we abide in Christ, the more his grace and power transforms us into his image. The more that we cling on, the more that we learn, the more that we see, the more that we follow, the more that we we become his power will change us into his image see that's where i was to be honest this morning <clears throat> i'm struggling with in my own heart is yes i believe in that love i believe in that grace and i believe in that mercy but sometimes i don't believe in the transformation that god can provide i think it's all good for my life right but i just don't see how it's possible for some of those in my life we see, that's why he, that's why we follow, that's why he gave this great commandment was because 
He showed us how to change this world and turn it upside down. How did the disciples do it, right? You have a bunch of kind of lay people, right? You had a bunch of fishermen. You had, a bunch, you had some tax collectors. You had all these guys that changed the world upside down, turned it upside down. Because he showed them how to love people. Yes, they spoke and, and people got saved, but that was the product of the Holy Spirit, right? <clears throat> but ultimately, it's because they loved the people around them. Wherever they would walk, they'd see somebody hurting, they'd heal them. They'd share the gospel with them. They broke bread every day together. Every day. The Bible says that they would sell their possessions and they kind of just took care of each other. I'm not saying we got to do that. I don't want to. Cole turned on the Charlie Manson thing, which is, I'm deathly afraid of Charlie Manson, even though he's dead. She turned it on Friday night, and I'm like, this is the creepiest thing ever. Like, it's, it's not just a commune. What, it, what he was saying was, if there was a need, it was taken care of. And it was all because they just loved each other the way Christ loved them. And so how are we supposed to... Rejoice on this walk that we're in. How are we supposed to rejoice in the fact that we're all trying to keep these commandments together, right? We do it together. See, on vacation, Nicole and I walked. And when I say we walked, we walked. We walked a lot. Um, Nicole would be like, we're going to go out for a walk. And our warm-up walk was like five miles. Yeah. And then she's like, let's go do another walk in the evening. Let's go walk the beach at night. And I'm like, I've walked five miles. I can't even walk to the bathroom right now. <laughs> and I mean, it's one thing to walk on the beach, right? And so we'll walk. We'll walk. If you guys see us in the neighborhood, you see us. We're walking usually with Simon. And, and lately, we, you know, I've had some mornings where we've been able to get out. And, and so we'll walk Simon a couple miles, and then we'll put him up and walk a couple more. And, you know, there's there's suit and people certain people in our neighborhood where it's, they're like hey where's your where's the where's the ball set and we're like ah you know he's got a lot of fur and he needs to go in and i look at nicole i'm like i got a lot of fur i need to go in right i'm it's hot out here but um but i enjoy these walks because when we walk we get to talk about the joys and struggles of life right we get to say man this is what i'm struggling with this is what i'm happy about this is all the things we get to do that right and, and but when the walk goes a little bit longer I don't talk as much. And Nicole thinks it's that I'm just thinking about things. Like she's like, oh, man, I've probably hit a nerve with him. He's thinking about all these things. Um, it's not got anything to do with that, Nicole. It's got because I'm just focused on finishing. Like there's a point in our walk where I'm just like, I just need to finish. <laughs> and if I talk here, I'm going to conserve all my resources, right? It was like that movie Apollo 13. We got to turn the heater off because we got to save these resources. If I didn't, if I talk, I don't have the resources to finish the walking. See, I think sometimes in our life, you know, we'll rejoice on this walk in the truth, right? This is how we rejoice. We share it with others in our lives, right? See, we're not meant to walk alone. God provides us. The, God provides this in the Trinity and in the beginning in Genesis, right? But I want you to understand. There's times just like on my walks that we think we focus more on the finish of it than we do where we're at right now. We focus more on one day we're going to be with him, and so our, our attention strives away from what we're really called to do, where our rejoicing really comes from, how we're to rejoice on our walk, right? God, I can tell you I'm the same way. If I, if I don't have a lot of time with people, then I, I, start, I feel it, right? I'm not joyous, right? I'm not those types of things, right? And, and see, that's how we rejoice in this walk. So I, we, we have this, this, this plan that God has set aside with the Trinity, right? The Father, the, the God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, right? Three and one, they all work together. And then Genesis 2, 18, it says this, Then the Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a help, helper fit for him. Right in the middle of the creation story, right in it, where he just says, That's not good. Man needs to have people in his life. We can't do this alone. See, Jesus modeled this in his life when he walked and chose the disciples. Jesus was all God, all man. He could have done it all by himself, but he modeled it for us and said, Hey, listen, there's joy to be found in this life. There's a way that you can rejoice that will gladden your heart. 
Mark 6, 7 says this, And he called the twelve, and he began to send them out two by two, and he gave them authority over the unclean spirits. When he sent them out on their own, he didn't send them by themselves. He sent them out two by two. See, we were never meant to walk this alone. We were never meant to do this journey alone. You see, I believe this is the crisis we're in today, not, not just per se church and village, but I think in our world today. Nicole read a book called, like literally the book was entitled, How to Human. <laughs> Did you ever think we'd live in a day where we'd have to read a book that says How to Human? We are so connected, but so alone. I mean, literally connected. I can talk to somebody right now from Europe instantly. Just a mere hundred years ago, that letter may or may not got there. See, we may tie ourselves together to things. Sports teams, etc., right? But understanding that we're called to walk in the truth of, of the gospel together is what God wants and how we fulfill this great commandment. It's not anything else other than that. It's being connected together with the thing that brings ultimate joy in our life. And, and when we're doing it together, we get to watch each other's journey, and that's where the rejoicing comes, and that's where the joy comes in our heart. You get to cheer on the people God has placed in your life, and you get to see them become more like Him as they see you, right? It is in the ups and downs we share in life where people see our love for one another that really defines our faith, not just our obedience. See, obedience to the great commandment, yes, it is important. But faith in the who design, who asked that commandment of us is more important. That's what people need to see. See, the Bible, it doesn't, I don't have this on the screen or anything. I, I say it week in, week out. We will be judged on our love. We will be judged on how we obeyed this great commandment because of our love, right? Because he loved us first. And so when we tie our things to other people, which is important, don't get me wrong. I truly believe that's why we do the things we do and the, the, all the things that we do, I th- you know, as we're sitting in this room, I know Quentin does an unbelievable job with our theater here in Carlisle. But here's why he does an unbe- unbelievable job with it is it builds a community for those kids. And I look at sports teams. I look at, at um, clubs that are inside school. Or I look at things that you guys are a part of in your life as well. And, and, and I look at my mom and my dad and the way that they live their life is, is we just want people to understand that there's a closeness that followers should have with one another because it will challenge, but it will also rejoice, make your heart to rejoice. That's what John is saying here. I rejoiced greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth just as we were commanded by the Father. So as I ask Amber to come back up, <clears throat> these are where we find ourselves today. I, I, I'm going to be honest. Ten years ago, I don't know if I would ever had to talk about not just how to human, but more how to understand that we are we are people that are created not just for connection, but community. Understand what I mean by that is it's not just that I'm connected, but I am driven by the community that I'm put, put, put in. That's why I think my heart has just been burdened with that fact lately. And that I may be a little bit different than most pastors out there, right? I, I love Sunday mornings. I love coming and worshiping. And I love 
preaching. I love coming and shaking everybody's hand, even though sometimes I'm out and I'm not, I don't get to shake your hand, right? I love that kind of stuff, but here's what's going to absolutely change the world that we live in is God has strategically placed you in places that is not competition to this, but it's an avenue to further further expand His glory to this world. And it's our goal as followers, and it's our job as followers to say, you know what, look at how they're loving their village. Look at how they're loving the people that God has placed them in their life and and get joy of finding that. John is writing to a church that I don't think he's ever even seen. He's just seen the leaders of that place. And he's saying, I'm rejoiced because I heard that they're following But we need to be in the community. We need to be in our communities. We need to be with each other. And we need to be talking about the struggles of life and and the, the joys of life. And we need to celebrate and we need to mourn and we need to grieve. And we need to help each other put back the pieces. We need to be angry together. We need to be just in the mundane okays of life together. Because that's the way it was designed. And that's the ultimate way that you show that you love one another because we love because he first loved us. So let us walk in the truth of the gospel together because we are bound together by it. If you follow Jesus, we are bound together by the gospel. Let us challenge ourselves to open our lives to one another. Listen, I'm not saying we got to sit here and I'm going to have everybody stand up and share your darkest secret. What I'm going to say is there's somebody in this room that you can at least share your struggle with. Because ultimately you're going to find out they struggle with the same thing. See, we need to open our lives to one another because I truly believe. I truly inside my heart and my soul believe this. We need to be open and we need to share life together because the world is desperate for a love that will change their lives. I'm not blind to the fact of what's going on in the world around us today. I'm not blind to the fact that just there's just an anger. I'm not blind to the fact that there's a selfishness. I'm not blind to any of that fact. But when I look at it, my heart breaks because they don't, the world just doesn't see that there is a love that changes everything in their life. There's a God that is hopeful and joyful that can change everything in their life. I need that. I need that in my own heart. I need to to not only know that there's a God that does it, but, but, but to believe in that God, that He does do it in my life still. And I truly believe that the world is desperate for that right now, and they need to see that right now. See, the book that Nicole was reading, the book called How to Human, is basically to understand that we have to redefine in our brain that people are human. And they're not just pieces on our journey. The biggest lesson I learned five years ago was simply this. You guys right now, we're on a journey together. But that doesn't mean that you're on my journey. <laughs> right? Your journey is your journey. My journey is my journey. Sometimes the path is aligned. Sometimes they don't. You're not a piece in my story. You have your own story. And when we realize that, and we realize it starts breaking down and it puts a humanness back into what it, the person is in front of me. So two questions, and I'm done this morning. It's simply this. Is it time for you to start walking in the truth? Is it time for you to say, you know what? I know who you are. I've seen who you are. I believe you are who you say you are, Jesus. But ultimately, is it time for you to say, I'm ready to follow you as Lord? See, there's a difference between the Savior and Lord, but you got to have them both. The Savior is what He did. That was the part He did to save us. 
the second part is, Lord, is what to choose when we choose to follow. That he is now who we follow and he's the Lord of my life, right? So is it time for you to start walking in that truth? Is it time for you this morning to say, I'm ready to follow Jesus? If it is, awesome. I am so excited. My heart is rejoicing in that decision. I just want to know about it. I just want you to say, hey, Eric. I'm ready to follow Jesus. And then we're going to talk about the next steps of that. And I'm going to place you in on some things. I'm going to give you a couple of things, that, some things that will help you out with that. So the, that's the first question. Is it time for you to start walking in that truth? The second question is this. How is your community? Now, I'm not asking you about how is Carlisle or how is Franklin. How is What I'm asking is how is your community? How is your community? journey going with the people God has placed you in. Just a quick illustration. I'm done this morning. I'll drop my kids off at their activities that they do. Brody has golf. Lily has volleyball. Usually about the same time in the morning. And my, my biggest joy is sometimes when I watch them is who has God placed into their life in that community? That's why I'm asking, how is your community? Where do you spend most of your time? And is God working inside that? Is God wanting to use you to work inside that? Because I'm telling you, somebody that God is, it's not by accident. If we believe that that God, and I don't say if, if God is the great creator of the world and he designed all these things, right? He did. I mean, think about it. It blows my mind. If we go off one degree, we'll either burn to death or freeze to death. This big, massive planet that we live on. And as last time I checked, it hasn't happened yet. So if we believe in that great design, then we have to believe in the fact that he's placed you intentionally to make that community better. But yet, you have to immerse yourself in a community. You have to walk with people. You have to be with people. So as I end this morning pray, I'm going to ask you guys to stand. Father, we thank you so much for the fact that you've created us to live in a community, that you've loved us to show a community that we can love them. Lord, what I am praying, what I am begging, what I am hoping for is not just a revival of, of the people of God, but I'm praying for a movement of you that will shake the foundations of this world that we live in. A movement to where people will see that you loved us so much in the muck in the darkness of our life that you can't leave us there and you came to pull us out of it. So I pray that the world can see that in our own lives this morning. Move, Lord. Move. We give you the glory for what you're going to do and we ask this in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. When I was young, you called my name tried to run but still you came and you stepped into the dark cause that's just the kind of God you are so when heaven seems beyond my reach you still see eternity in me you're turning ashes into ice cause that's just the It's on the rugged cross. Your death defying love is written in your skies. You'll never quit on me. You'll always hold my heart. Cause that's the kind of guy you are. Oh, it's in the empty tomb. 
It's on the rugged cross. Your death-defying love is written in your skies. You'll never quit on me. You'll always hold my heart. Cause that's the kind of guy you are. Well, thank you guys for joining us today. Remember next week, kind of look which door the flags are on. I'll actually we'll make it very obvious which way you need to come in. Um, youth tonight, and we'll see you guys next week.